Kuzuzampo, welcome to this week's edition of the Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program. I'm Kim Zong Hadden. These are our top stories from the past seven days. His Majesty grants an audience to Her Imperial Highness Princess Akiko of Mikasa of Japan. His Holiness bestowing Wang Lun Trisun in Prince. And detailed project report on the Kurigori Hydroelectric Project complete. His Majesty the King granted an audience to Her Imperial Highness Princess Akiko of Mikasa, Japan, at the Tashi Chozong on the 9th of March. Her Imperial Highness Princess Akiko of Mikasa is in Bhutan on a visit and was accompanied by the Ambassador of Japan to Bhutan for the visit. His Holiness the Jaikempo is bestowing Wan Loon Trisum or oral transmission of Tertem Sangi Lingpa's treasure teachings at Aotso Central School in Hunsi. The treasure teachings, known as Lama Gondi, comprises 13 volumes. More than 10,000 devotees have gathered to receive the transmission. The ceremony is being held after about three decades in the country. Last Sunday, His Holiness performed Nguyen ritual in the morning and administered oral transmission of his own literary compositions towards the afternoon. Her Majesty Queen Mother Sangye Choden Wangchuk graced the International Women's Day celebrations at the Gelpushing College of Information and Technology in the capital. Every year, 8th of March is celebrated worldwide as International Women's Day to commemorate the achievements and contributions of women. This year's United Nations theme for International Women's Day is Invest in Women, Accelerate Progress, while the global theme is Inspire Inclusion. The UN theme underscores the pivotal role women play in propelling societal advancement. At the International Women's Day celebrations in Kabisa, Her Majesty Queen Mother Sangye Chodin Wangchuk also marked her 25th year as the Goodwill Ambassador of the United Nations Population Fund. It also marked the 20th year since the establishment of Renew. Her Majesty also unveiled Renew's 20th anniversary logo. During the event, six individuals from six South Asian countries were presented the Got to Break Free Award. Got to Break Free Award is a new award that we have established to recognize the work of activists that have done excellent work to reduce or to respond to SGBV, to sexual and gender-based violence. It recognizes the contribution they have done in each of the countries of this region and we hope that this award will give them the possibility and motivation to do even more. <laughs> The event was jointly organized by Renew and the National Commission for Women and Children. Meanwhile in Punakha, the day was marked by girl students and staff of the Ugin Academy engaged in playing football. The Bhutan Football Federation organized the event to use it as a catalyst to create equal space for girls and women to actively participate in sports. Officials from the Bhutan Football Federation say sports allow girls to feel empowered and safe within their own environment. I think like football is so powerful. It's loved. It's a love sport. It's played everywhere in the world. And it's one of the most popular sports in Bhutan. Not one, if not the most popular sport in Bhutan. So it's just creating equal, equal opportunities and just providing the girls the platform to showcase their talents and, you know, uh, ensure that they get the chance as well. Ugin Academy is an institution which provides every opportunity despite the gender. Just like so, today's event is a platform where women, girls, they are all acknowledged and honoured and I am too. I feel very honoured especially when there are events being held like this because it shows about gender equality and then it shows how our country is developing. So I feel very, very good. The day's celebration not only reflects on past accomplishments of women, but also envisions a future where women's empowerment is not just a goal, but a lived reality. With additional information from Changadoji in Panaka, the Klazum for BBS News. 
Her Majesty Gelium Sangi Chodin Wangchuk graced the prize and certificate award ceremony for a design competition titled From Pixel to Fabrics Digital Design in Traditional Weaving on Monday. The competition held for the first time in the country invited digital designers and weavers to submit their digital designs, prototypes and ideas on how to improve the working conditions of the weavers in the country. The top three submissions were given cash prizes and certificates. The National Referral Hospital has received its first intra-iotic balloon pump kit. The equipment will help patients with heart conditions to help the heart circulate enough blood to the rest of the body. The Rotary Club in Thimpu handed over the equipment on Wednesday. Intra-aortic balloon pump kit has a disposable balloon which can be used once on a patient. The Rotary Club donated 16 balloons this time. The club plans to send two doctors and seven nurses to India this month to get trained on using the device. So we plan to do much more for the health ministry if possible in future. And with the help of Rotary International. And today's equipment is intra-arctic uh, balloon pump, which, is, uh, which costs around $72,600. This we have managed to do it with the help of Rotary Club of Germany and Rotary Club of Denmark, and then the balance amount was matched by Rotary International. Doctors at the National Referral Hospital said the equipment is useful in failing heart scenarios such as artery blockage. The equipment has a balloon that needs to be inserted into the blood vessel to assist the heart. The balloon will inflate and deflate, aiding blood circulation. Doctors added that the life-saving equipment is often used internationally during open-heart surgery. Basically, our uh, patients that benefit from this equipment, which is called intra-aortic balloon pump, a group of patients that have heart failure or poor heart, a weak heart. So this machine, uh, it offloads the stress from the heart. So this is one equipment which will really improve the standard of care that we provide at the heart center in, in JDW and RH. Until today, the hospital relied on medication for heart patients, but the doctor said the medication is not as effective as the equipment. The equipment, which costs around 8 million nitrum, will be part of the catheterization laboratory or cath lab launched last year. For Singedema, this is Tikil Hazum for BBS News. In the past five months, the National Referral Hospital saw more than 1,500 patients seeking special consultation services. Most of them availed themselves of the medicine and dermatology services. Patients say access to healthcare services has become more convenient with special consultation services. Special consultation service is an off-hour service where patients have to pay a certain consultation fee. The National Referral Hospital provides the special consultation services from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. The patients need to pay a fee ranging from 100 to 5,000 neutrum. Almost all the healthcare services are available during the special consultation service. The patients seeking the service said that the timing is convenient as they do not have to waste the whole day in the hospital. This service is very helpful because during office hours we have to go to work and be with our children. With this service, we can visit the hospital after office hours when we are free. I think it is fine to pay the fee because it makes life easier. However, a few patients who did not want to come on camera said that the phone numbers provided by the hospital for special consultation are not in service most of the time. To this, the medical superintendent of the hospital said that they did not receive any complaints regarding this matter. Recently, we have seen posts on Facebook complaining about the special consultation service. I want to clarify that we do not take appointments in advance. 
patients should make an appointment on the day that they want to avail themselves of the service. From our side, there are no issues and everyone is carrying out their duties properly. The hospital started the special consultation services in October last year. Namgidim, BBS News. Deeply rooted gender norms, gender-based violence and underrepresentation of women in decision-making, among others, continue to pose a significant challenge to Bhutan in achieving gender equality. This is according to the UN Bhutan Sustainable Development Report 2023. Listed as the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 5, gender equality is important for any development progress and ensures that everyone, regardless of gender, can contribute equally to the economic growth and social progress. The United Nations is calling for coordinated efforts to achieve the goal through policy reforms and investment in women empowerment. According to the United Nations, traditional gender roles and stereotypes are deeply rooted in many societies, limiting opportunities for women and reinforcing gender inequality. In addition, violence against women and girls, including domestic violence and sexual assault, which are prevalent in communities across the country, act as a barrier to achieving gender equality. Furthermore, like elsewhere in the world, Bhutanese women are underrepresented in political sphere with a few women in leadership positions. This, according to the UN, ultimately limits women's ability to influence policies and decisions that affect their lives. Besides, women disproportionately bear the burden of unpaid care work, including childcare and household chores, which limit their participation in the workforce and other areas of public life. First, let me point out that Bhutan is no different than many other countries. So Bhutan is not uh, out of the ordinary. But uh, Bhutan suffers from the same uh, situation as many other countries, and it's linked to regressive social norms, norms that keep women from being at par with men. According to the UN Women, the inability to achieve gender equality impacts the progress of all the other SDGs, thereby affecting overall development. Gender equality is a cross-cutting, even though it's its own SDG, it's actually a cross-cutting uh, factor that in, in impacts all of the, the SDGs, whether we're talking about food uh, and the availability of food and the access to food, whether we're talking about uh, sustainable cities and decisions around what kind of facilities will be available and what kind of social services uh, cities provide, whether we're talking about education. Nonetheless, works are in progress to achieve gender equality through initiatives that promote women's education and health care and by implementing policies to address gender-based violence. Renew, one of the implementing partners in achieving the Gender Equality SDG, works towards empowering women and promoting gender equality. We also work with the local leaders very closely so that uh, because they are in the community and they are the first point of contact for the rural people down there. And we do work with the, the religious organizations because then, you know, we, if you really want to talk about the, uh, to really want to work on this gender inequality that's happening, the social issues, I think it's the, it's the social norms that we need to, you know, to, to, need to work towards. So then, then I think our religious leaders really play a big role in this. Lab. According to the United Nations, these challenges can be addressed if relevant authorities coordinate efforts at the national and local levels. It requires authorities concerned to bring about policy reforms, invest in women's health and education, and promote women's economic empowerment besides taking initiatives to fight gender norms and stereotypes. Bhutan has to achieve the Gender Equality SDG along with other SDGs by 2030. For Sona Bilkit, Karma Samdhan PBS News. The Bhutan Trust Fund signed funding agreements worth around 80 million ngutam with its eight project partners in Thimpu on the 8th of March. The grant is for the annual funding window 2023 to 2024. The beneficiaries were selected from 86 proposals. They will mainly focus on preserving biodiversity, enabling human wildlife coexistence, mitigating and adapting to climate change, and addressing adverse impact of development on the environment. According to the Bhutan Trust Fund, the projects are aligned with its core mandates and the priorities of the 13th Five-Year Plan. 
Four of the beneficiaries are governmental agencies and institutions, while the other four are from the non-governmental sector. There is a severe water shortage in Ochiuk. We thought of building a water tap but could not get a source. Water is insufficient for both paddy cultivation and growing vegetables. Now that our project got approved, it will benefit a lot of farmers. With this project, more people will take up cultivation. The Geok office will work hard to complete the project on time. We are very glad for getting the grant from Bhutan Trust Fund. Through the project, we will inspire other women to initiate similar projects. We can encourage them that we are capable of doing anything and that they should come forward. With this proposal, we are trying to train women in Samsi, Chuka and Gelifu and make them self-sufficient. There is finally some development on one of the country's biggest hydropower projects, the Kuri Gonri Hydroelectric Project. Webcost Limited, an Indian consultancy, has finalized a detailed project report, DPR, for the hydroelectric project. The Department of Energy and the Indian consultancy conducted the public consultation for the last two days in Pemagatsil. The DPR will now be submitted to the government for approval. Webcost Limited has been carrying out the feasibility study since 2017 and has compiled the detailed project report spending around 400 million newton. The study revealed that the Kuregongri hydroelectric project has the potential to generate 2,800 megawatts of hydroelectric power, although it was initially said to have a capacity to generate 2,640 megawatts of electricity. The project site has been identified near the confluence of Kurichu and Gongrichu in Mongar. The project is expected to bring economic development for the locals in the area and for the country at large. However, the report shows that people in 10 Georgs of Mongar, Pemagasal and Tashikang will be affected once the project starts. A few of them will be required to relocate while some will lose their farmland to the project. Talking to the affected people and local leaders of Pemagasal and Mongar, the officiating director of the Department of Energy said the consultation meeting was to clarify and to get consent from the people so that the construction of the hydropower project goes smoothly without hindrance. Although the DPR is complete, we are going to take note of all the concerns and issues you have raised here today. We will make sure these concerns and issues reach the government. They will look into it and make the decisions accordingly. The project is expected to be completed within 10 years after commencement and is expected to cost over 306 billion newton. For Tilidoji in Pamagasal, this is Sangi Shazom for BBS News. Despite having over 69% of forest cover, the country imports more wood products. So forest resource assessments show that the country could increase its forest utilization with the availability of advanced harvesting and processing technologies while maintaining its forest cover targets. This is according to the Bhutan Country Environmental Analysis, taking the green growth agenda forward report which the Department of Environment and Climate Change launched with the support from the World Bank. The report highlighted six major challenges faced by workers and firms in the country post the pandemic recovery phase in 2022. Low levels of female labor force participation were one of the key findings among the six. According to the report, female labor force participation is only 53% compared to 73% male participation. Moreover, the report reveals that majority of the women are engaged in low productive sectors, mostly in agriculture. To address these challenges, the World Bank experts recommended the need to provide low-skilled women employment opportunities in urban areas through policy reforms. In Bhutan, we need to address 
the female labor force participation that is still today below the male labor force participation. And there is a, l a significant number of women as well that cannot find jobs because they have to take care of kids at home. So a policy is to, needs to be comprehensive in a way that the employment services centers as well early childhood centers can be in place to support these women to work. In addition, the report recommended increasing the productivity of agricultural workers, especially in rural areas. According to the report, the country's agricultural productivity is low despite the agriculture sector having the most number of employees. The report examined the labor market in Bhutan, intending to identify the most pressing challenges at the pandemic recovery stage and ways to mitigate them. With additional information from Reshma and Kinzang, Devika Pradhan for BBS News. The country is witnessing an increase in the population of black-necked crane, reflecting Bhutan's conservation efforts. According to the Royal Society for Protection of Nature's recently released 2023 annual report last year, Bhutan received nearly 680 black-necked cranes. This is a 12% increase from the previous year's tally of close to 600. The migratory bird arrives in the country every winter from their summer breeding grounds in Tibet. As of last month, the RSBN recorded varying numbers of black-necked cranes across different winter habitats in Bhutan. Pobjika recorded the highest number with 609 cranes, followed by Bumdaling with 62, Kotoka with 3, and Tang with 2. Officials from the RSPN said black-necked crane population is gradually increasing globally. This positive trend is attributed to collaborative conservation efforts of countries and communities hosting the birds. The officials said that RSPN recently completed works to restore 25 acres of degraded paddy fields at Bumdaling wetland area, which was damaged by flood. Additionally, the black-necked crane aviary at Black-necked Crane Education Center in Gante Pobjika was also recently extended to accommodate more birds. Though the number of birds are increasing, the officials said habitat loss and impacts of human activity still pose challenges in the birds' conservation. According to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, the black-necked crane is recognized as near-threatened. This means that the bird may be vulnerable to becoming endangered in the near future. Karmasubdhavangda, PBS News. That is it in this week's edition of the Bhutan This Week. Until next time, this is Kinzang Hadin saying goodbye.